Marxism is powerful because it is true. These were the words of one of the greatest revolutionary minds of the 20th century, the leader of the Russian Revolution, Lenin. It is true only in so far as it is scientific and it accords with the needs of any given society. Many people have led us to believe that since the fall of the Soviet Union, Marxism is now no longer valid or true. In fact, what we have seen is quite the reverse. With the onslaught of neoliberal capitalism and what happened in the former Soviet Union, everything that Marxism taught us about capitalism and about imperialism has proven to be true twice over. This experience of the defeat of socialism in the former Soviet Union invites us to think about the importance of the theoretical struggle. It was not because the Soviet Union was militarily defeated or economically defeated that socialism declined there or was defeated there. In fact, the central issue was a theoretical, political, ideological, cultural struggle. And that is what we are trying to do with the MBSA, with the IPA. We are underscoring the importance of developing and building Marxist Leninist theory to combat the results of neoliberal globalization, the hunger, the lack of development in third world countries, the patriarchy, the poverty, the ethnic riots and ethnic divisions, the lack of education, the lack of health care, the elite domination over our societies. We need Marxism, Leninism today more than we ever needed it in the past. And if you call, and if you for any reason doubt this, I invite you to look at the bold and incredible struggle of the people of Nepal. In that short play, you saw the politics of the last two decades, more than that in fact. How the monarchy was confronted, how it was defeated, what the various political positions, ideological and theoretical positions were. And although the play may just be a play, it encapsulated decades of struggle of millions of people and what they fought for and what they believed in. Hence, it's a great honor and privilege to be here, Mr. Former Prime Minister and all the honored guests, to be invited by the Communist Party of Nepal, Unified Socialists, to be the guests of our comrades of Nepal, to be the guests of the communists of Nepal, and to be able to share our experiences and to learn from them and to learn from all the other honored guests. I bid to you that as a student, you are all adults, you are no longer children, I assume, but as a student, there are, of course, certain responsibilities that fall upon us. If the Communist Party of Nepal Unified Socialists has taken the time and energy of its people to invite you, to host us, to literally make us stand on their shoulders and to say, you people deserve the credit for this, you people deserve the credit for that work which the Communist Party of Nepal Unified Socialist has done, then it is our responsibility to do the following. Number one, we must study and we must study hard. In the 21 days that we have, we must apply ourselves, body and mind, to what is being stated from this podium. And we must work hard, take notes, concentrate, pay attention, read, do the readings, read the readings. Some of it may feel tiring, some of it may feel difficult, but we owe it to our guests to learn from what they have put at our disposal. Secondly, to engage in networking, in internationalism, and in peer learning. Half the learning is going to be from this podium towards the student body, but the other half of the learning is for all of you people to come together, to learn from each other's culture, to make friendships to the people of India, to Pakistan, to Nepal, to Brazil. Get to know each other. Get to know about each other's movements, 
and struggles and history. Learn about your, each other's poetry. Learn about what you love, what your sense of humor is like. Don't be judgmental about other people. Open your hearts and open your minds. These are your comrades, not just for the next 21 days, but for the struggle against capitalism and imperialism. Combine this study and fear learning with work. Since we represent the working class people, we must study and work together. Work is also part of learning. When you do your tasks, as said by the NBSA, you are simultaneously uh, taking the time to labor and to learn from the activity of labor. All the schools all over the world that undertake these sorts of trainings also underscore the importance of working together. That collective work will create real solidarity. But all work and no play also makes for a dull existence. So play and play hard. We will have cultural nights. We will have music. We will have dancing. We will have poetry. We will have literature. We will share and enjoy with each other the products of the working people of our various respective cultures and society. Without culture, without celebrating your own culture, your own history and heritage, without connecting with your roots, there can be no revolution. Revolution emerges from the roots of a society. And last but not least, when you studied hard, when you have built proletarian internationalism, when you worked hard, and when you played just as hard, the last task that we leave to you is to go back to your country, organize the workers and peasants, and lead the socialists. Oh, you know it already. Hey, no,